Grüß, uh, willkommen in einem anderen in our Fregens video, or welcome to another exciting video, in this case episode 3 of my game design series of videos. In this video I'll be providing a brief overview of World War II and Cold War platoon scale figure gaming rules. This video represents the fifth update, covering more rules and cleaning up the format somewhat. While this video series was originally designed for those wishing to design their own rules, I've changed its focus to that of a review of rules, as this would be of more interest to most of my viewers. I'll still cover some game system design topics at the end for those interested in that particular topic. In this case, this video will cover rules, which I call platoon scale, where each element or base represents a platoon of infantry, or three to five tanks, which is a platoon of tanks, or armoured fighting vehicles. This allows a player to command a couple of standard battalions or a weak regiment or brigade. Platoon scale rules gained in popularity in the late 1980s and is the main scale being used by old time experienced players today. Platoon scale rules allows a player to command a brigade or equivalent and still allows a player to have a tank heavy force mix. This allows a player a balance between their love of tanks and the ability to perform more complex strategies than would be possible with a lower scale set of rules. If you want to have a game which can be comfortably completed within a day, you should limit the number of elements per side to 50 or less. If each element represents a platoon, then a player can be expected to field about two battalions. If a battalion consists of between 9 and 20 elements, our limit is 2 to 3 battalions per side allowing players to command a regiment or brigade. While not normally significant in most cases, rules which use this scale normally employs combat units, or what I call combat units, which are of company size. While few rules do have any specific rules for what I call combat units, most players will typically keep their elements into company size combat units. In some cases, the rules could employ company headquarters, which would require a player to actually keep the company together. However, this is rather rare. Finally, let's look at the headquarters. Almost all sets of rules possess two levels of command, a CNC, which represents the player, and several subordinate subcommanders, and then, of course, the combat units, or in some cases, the individual elements themselves. At this scale, the CNC is a brigade or regimental HQ, and the subcommanders are battalion HQs. This chart lists many of the platoon scale micro armour figure gaming rules which were published since 1986. Rules in this scale saw some interesting innovations such as the combination of fire and movement in a single phase, the use of order, chits and command points. The initial rules were very complex and slow to play but by 1989 the rules being printed were focusing on playability. As long as the force mixes were small enough games could complete within a 6 hour period if not shorter. I have to point out here that while most of the images used in this video are from my games, I've added several spearhead game images from the internet to add variety and bling. When you look at the actual figure scale normally used at this scale, the rules seem to focus on 6mm figures. While never formally published, Gene McCoy's rules, unofficially called Wargamers Digest World War II rules, may have been the first serious attempt at creating a platoon scale set of rules. Parts of the rules, which evolved a great deal, were published in the Wargamer Digest magazine between 1973 and 1975 and in 1978. A published version was announced. Unfortunately, uh, this never occurred and only the notes remained. I attempted to complete the rules based on the notes, but I'm uncertain if this exactly matches Gene's vision. The primary innovation with the scale is the scale and the fire combat system. The fire combat system used the lots of D6 dice system and a very simple range system, which, is, which became quite common in later rules. Bruce Reed Taylor's core commander was the first published platoon scale set of rules designed solely for micro armor. Unlike every other set of rules at this scale, this used a strength point system with each element possessing from one to nine strength points, which needed to be kept track of. The system was never popular, even if it had many game system benefits. While these rules are claimed to be company scale, that is each element is a company, in most cases elements consisted of six strength points. Thus, I generally class it as a platoon scale set of rules. 
The strength point system did allow players to field low-value troops at a high strength, thus reducing the number of elements used, so it was a bit of a hybrid scale. The major issue with these rules were the were its sheer complexity, which restricted a game down to regimental size. This was a major disappointment for many players, including me, who were hoping to field divisions. These rules were a masterpiece of game design, but proved to be too ungainly, ungainly to easily use or play. Apart from its sheer completeness, its main innovation was the use of its strength points and its scale. At 60 minutes a game turn and a ground scale of 1 in 10,000, a player could play a game consisting of an entire day, or spanning an entire day, which was a first for micro armor figure gaming rules. In 1986, Frank Chadwick published a board game called Command Decision, which could have been used for micro-armour figures as well. As with Core Commander, it proved far too slow to play to simulate more than the Brigade, and its recommended use of umpires did limit its versatility. The rules looked nice, but its internal structure left a lot to be desired. Nonetheless, the rules proved initially rather popular in the US, as now players could command regiments on the playing area, and I suspect, as with Core Commander, they were all hoping that they could command divisions as well. The rules contained army list, equipment list, and even scenarios. The one interesting Interesting innovation was the order chits, which common in the world of board games was not in the world of micro armor figure gaming. Order rules are very difficult to get right. Core Commander simply skipped over the whole section or topic, while Combined Decision and Combined Arms created simple rules for orders. In 1988, Frank Frank Chadwick published Combined Arms, which was solely designed for micro-armour and was focused on Cold War conflicts. It was basically the same as Command Decision, although the focus was now micro-armour rather than board gaming. As Frank Chadwick's main focus was World War II, these rules remain a bit of a standalone affair. Considering Frank's background in designing Cold War board games, I found this rather strange. By focusing on World War II, he did manage to create a very complete figure gaming ecosystem for his World War II rules. Unfortunately, he never followed this up for his Cold War rules. In 1989, Lightning War, a free set of rules written by David Child Dennis, became available. I assume this was originally a free PDF set of rules available on the bulletin board. In 2003, it was updated and made available on the internet. Both Core Commander, Command Decision, and Command Arms proved too complex and difficult to use by many players, so these players searched for something more playable. Lightning War attempted to fill the gap, which it did reasonably well, but in the pre-internet age, these rules' availability was very limited. The main innovation was a focus on playability and a rather interesting system for orders. For its simplicity and game turn scale of 60 minutes allowed players to play a full game day within a real day frame or time frame, but it failed to leave a mark. Rapid Fire was the first serious attempt at creating a set of rapid play rules for this scale. These were very professionally produced rules with good supporting material. It was designed for 15mm figures rather than 6mm figures. I suspect the Flames of War took many ideas from these rules when they published their first edition in 2002. Scale was undefined. The main focus was sheer playability. These rules did not get the traction that Flames of War did. I suspect this was because the type of play involved in this scale were normally more experienced players who did not need the simplicity of rapid fire. New players would gravitate towards a squad scale rather than platoon scale, although these rules often played like a squad scale game. These rules were considered a success and are still basically being played today with updated versions. In 1995, Spearhead was published, and while not as professional as Rapid Fire, these rules proved to be the most popular in this scale. There was nothing innovative in the game system, and the space expended on rules for orders and fire priority does seem a bit unusual, but it seemed to hit all the right buttons. The rule structure and length were ideal as a reference book on the playing area. The use of equipment stat sheets greatly assisted play, and the army list in a separate book was extensive. Many clubs took up these rules, especially in New Zealand, and a great deal of supporting material was created. Most importantly, a point system was created which allowed for competitive play. These rules are still being played widely today, and new scenarios are still being created and posted on the internet. Tactical Command by Michael J. Licarni was another attempt at creating fast play rules for platoon-scale micro-armour. 
The rules were rather good, but as with many free rules, lacked supporting material and focused on a specific conflict or theatre, thus never proved that popular. These rules did contain a significant innovation, the limited combination of fire and movement in a single phase. While opportunity file fire has been used since Corps Commander, tactical command allowed players to mix movement and fire combat in a single phase. This was an early and limited move in this direction, but for micro armor rules was a real innovation. In the world of board gaming, this idea was explored in a number of Cold War games in the early 1980s by SPI, but when that company disappeared, the idea seemed to take a back burner, particularly in the board gaming world. Up Tai Lung, 15 mil World War II battle rules, are rules produced by Peter Pig to accompany their 15 mil figures. Generic unit types and simplistic combat, which the main objective being simplicity and speed of play. These rules use a card system to determine what elements can do, which is a nice idea in terms of enhancing playability, but the overall system weighed too much in favour of fast play and realism suffered as a result. No hard and fast scale, but basically one element is a platoon, with the ground and game turn scale being very vague indeed. I have never seen these rules being used, but they do seem like a good set of use for someone new to the hobby and possibly people should consider it if they are considering entering the hobby at this scale. GHQ created free rules for platoon scale gaming called Micro Armor the Game World War II. These rules are very professionally made and reasonably complete. The major issue was the time scale of three minutes per game turn. If correct, a typical game would only spin span 60 minutes of actual action, which is not the type of conflict players which use this scale, are really looking for. However, never having used these rules, this may represent the moment of contact, and in reality, a game turn represents a longer period. In summary, very nice rules, but they seem to have not gained any traction. With all the rules and difficulty of learning new rules, a set of rules has to offer something really different and exciting in order to get noticed, and these rules may not have achieved that objective. In 2001, Kampfgruppen Commander was published and today it's on its third edition. These have proved reasonably popular and have a major focus on command and control through the use of action points. While the idea of action points is not new, Frank Chadwick used them for many in many of his early board games, it's not very common in micro armor, or at least it wasn't up to this point. I've always liked the idea as it allowed the better trained forces to do more than a poorly trained force, avoiding special German invincibility rules, but I'm not certain if the benefit is that great and if you can achieve the same thing through other mechanisms. Other rules achieve a similar objective without the use of special action point sections in the rules. However, Kampfgruppen Commander keeps the game system complexity down, so it's probably not really a major issue in this case. The other innovation is the ability to combine movement and fire combat in a single phase, which is becoming more and more popular. Stonk was another set of free rules which seemed to gain some traction before eventually fading away. The game system was playable and the rules, while not professionally presented, were usable. There seemed to be no real innovative new ideas in the rules, so I'm uncertain for the reason of their initial popularity, but the game turn scale could indicate players from squad scale gaming may have been the main audience. They are available as a free download on IO Group. Blitzkrieg Commander 2nd Edition has been covered in the squad scale video, as that edition was mainly focused on squad scale. The 3rd edition, which came out in 2010, had its main focus platoon scale, which is why it's here. As each element represents 5 times the vehicles, guns and men, it's safe to assume the ground scale is now 1 in 5,000. The time scale is harder to pin down, but an infantry element can move 10 centimetres in a game turn, which is 500 metres. You would expect this to take 20 to 40 minutes, depending on the terrain, so the game scale is probably 30 minutes per game turn, although it could be as high as 60 minutes. The whole scale topic is very abstract in these rules, which is common with many rules which focus on playability, which is what these rules focus on. In 2011, A Fistful of Toe 3 was published based on the Where Panzer Dare dated 2004 and written by Ty Beard and Paul Minson. These rules proved to be very popular, rivaling Spearhead. While the rules book format is poor and the sheer size of the book is daunting, the rules themselves are not long or complex, and these rules provide a quick and good game. 
The time scale is an issue with me as it makes it impossible to refight, refight a game day battle. But apart from this, they are very good rules. There is nothing innovative in the game system, but if we drill into the detail, the equipment value, the system they use is very good indeed and is probably the key element of their success. There is a reasonable number of scenarios around, but I still feel these rules lack a lot of the supporting material which Spearhead possesses. On the other hand, the rules contain so much supporting material, perhaps it's not needed. It has an excellent point system, allowing for competitive play. TAC 2 have been around for a long time and have gone through a number of upgrades, this version being 2015. The fact that they've been around for so long has to indicate they are popular somewhere, but I've never seen a game, so it's not where I have gamed at least. Each unit has its own tra tactical rating depending on its effectiveness, which ranges from 4 to 8. In certain situations, such as to change orders, you must roll higher than your rating to succeed in the task. Units have several modes of action to use from a straight march move, move bold attack, deliberate attack, defence mode, preferred defence mode and default mode. Depending on what mode your troops are in also determines how fast you move, if at all, and when you may fire. In the firing phase there is a order of firing so a unit in a prepared defence mode can fire three times and if you are in bold attack mode you only fire once. In 2016, Jim Bambra published Combat HQ, another set of rules focused on command. Rather than command points, it uses dice chains, which provides players with the number of orders they can issue. The other point of interest is the combination of movement and fire combat. The advantages of combining movement and fire combat is it avoids the focus many players have of lining up their forces for the best shot, rather than focus on what the objective is to take. This could it be why spearheads spend so much time in defining fire priorities. These rules are very innovative and interesting. However, the rules are spread over many publications, causing a lot of confusion. While the early lack of supporting material has been resolved, the rules layout, while crisp and clean, is far too long for the rules to act as a useful reference on the playing area. These issues can all be resolved by reformatting, so I'll be keenly watching what happens to these rules in the future. They look rather interesting. This set of rules is the latest version of Rapid Fire called Rapid Fire Reloaded. The original fast play rules are now even faster with new, easy to remember mechanisms and streamlined systems. I'm uncertain how much this does to actually speed up play, but having a focus in this area is positive. The most interesting aspect is the focus on varying scale. You can use the standard Rapid Fire 1 to 15 figure and 1 to for infantry and 1 to 5 vehicle ratios for brigade level engagements but you can now use a 1 to 1 scale for infantry and also tanks for a skirmish scale and a 1 to 45 for infantry and a 1 to 15 for vehicles for a divisional level battle. This variable scale trend is becoming somewhat popular in some rules although I'm uncertain how well it actually works having tried it myself in some of my rules conversions. Moving from a scale of 1 to 1 to 1 to 15 or even 1 to 45 introduces a lot of game system changes when dealing with World War II. But if they have achieved this then it's very positive indeed. Cold War Commander has been around since 2006, but a new edition was released in 2022, which looks good on the surface. It was supposed to have cleaned up the issue with the first edition, but many reviewers seem to indicate the rules retain the difficulty to, the re to learn and the reference format being difficult to use in a game. The saving grace is there is a PDF version, so it becomes possible to search for key rules. In summary, learning the rules probably will be difficult, but if you can find an experienced player to teach you, you will be better off. Putting the learning curve and actual game system putting the learning curve to one side, the actual game system is good based on the old Warhammer rules. The sequence of play is the standard I go, you go, with a few twists to add realism in terms of fire combat. The scale is very vague and with a range of scales available. I assumed it's optimized for one in two thousand scale, but I prefer one in five thousand scale with longer game turns so I can reproduce a reasonable conflict. While I wish the reprint was better formatted and structured, the rules are reasonable and playable. 
The history of platoon scale rules starts in 1986, if we only include published rules, and its popularity has grown since. Many gamers who started on squad scale rules have migrated to this scale today. The list I've provided is clearly not complete, but it does give you a good view of how the state of the art of the rules have developed. Focusing on game systems and avoiding the detail of fire systems, the main developments seem to be the combination of movement and fire combat, focus on orders and command systems, playability and completeness. Platoon scale games still use the traditional sequential sequences of play, but starting with Lightning War, players now had to ensure each element conducts all fire combat and movement before the next element was active, which introduced a bit of a twist to the standard sequence of play. Some rules allowed for the option of fire or move, and alternatively combining fire and movement, providing more than one fire and movement phase in that case, which allowed for a wide variety of movement and fire combat combinations. The innovation was that these new sequences of play was moving away from the line up all your forces for the best shot and then complete, then then uh, let loose your fire combat tactic. This occurred in the board gaming world as well, with the concept of overruns growing to the point it was your main form of combat, as occurred with BAOR or 5th Core SPI board games. Platoon scale rules have increasingly focused on orders and command control systems. Core Commander had a very detailed and complex command control system, but in the area of order it was very vague and it was left to the players to decide what to do. Command Decision or Command Arms used a board gaming type of command chit system, which seemed to work reasonably well, as did Lightning War. Rapid Fire downplayed orders in an attempt for playability, and this seemed to continue until Spearhead, which created a written order system. Kampfgruppe and Command brought in command points and Combat HQ command dice strings. The trend in terms of command control is clear. Increased use of combined fire and movement faces which could be conducted more than once based on command points or allowed actions. The reason why order rules are used in many game systems is a bit unclear but it seems to be to eliminate gamey tactics. Games which encourage the line-up to shoot tactic needed orders to force forward movement. Otherwise you ended up with two lines letting loose against each other until one side was almost gone. Rules which use the combined movement and fire and simulated orders with victory conditions would not need these type of order rules to force forward movement. It's true, without orders we do not have the charge of the light brigade occurring as occurred in the desert quite often, but I'm not certain if these situations make for good games. In summary, if the order rules can be short, crisp and clear, they may be useful, but always consider what problems are order rules trying to solve. If you can't think of a problem that needs to be solved, then don't include order rules. Apart from the initial platoon scale rules, the early platoon scale rules were complex and slow to play. So from that point on, the main focus of game designers was to create quick play rules. Even with this focus, I'm not sure they've achieved the same level of playability as Flames of War, as, and it would be difficult to complete a game of Spearhead in three hours, but you can do it certainly in six hours. This scale lacks a set of rules like Flames of War, which could achieve the same level of popularity as Flames of War. But I think the reason is from Spearhead onwards, the rules have always had some focus on playability, so the demand for a super simple set of rules simply does not exist. I would suggest it would be Rapid Fire, which represents the playability advancement at this scale, and now no other rules at this scale can beat them for playability, thus there's no real driver to basically become more playable than, let's say, rapid fire. The other critical factor in terms of success of a set of rules is completeness, and that was a big focus in the platoon area. Creating the rules is only a small part of providing a complete product or solution. Hosts of supporting materials need to be created in order to allow players to quickly assemble an army and play a game. Apart from the freeware rules, this has always been a focus at this scale, although with Spearhead a lot of the supporting materials has been created by wargaming clubs, This is not a bad strategy. If your rules are good enough, others take up the task of providing army lists, point systems and scenarios. The other issue with this strategy, or there is a major issue with this strategy, is getting those third parties to expend the effort, which today is unlikely to occur. So I suspect Spearhead managed to gain a unique benefit because of the situation or the year that it was coming out. Modern rules designers simply can't afford to hope for other people to generate 
the supporting material that they may not wish to produce. Command decision was the first set of rules which attempted to provide a large amount of supporting material. I must admit they did an excellent job, but in the end it was not as popular as Spearhead, which did not provide this content initially, leaving it up to clubs. I suspect for the reason for this was Spearhead was very short and sweet, while Command Decision was long and there was a lot of words to churn through. I feel Command Decision is an example of a set of rules which got the support issue covered, but it was too hard to learn or use as a reference document or it just had some non-user friendliness aspect which caused players to gravitate towards other rules. Fistful of Toes sold this by providing you with everything in a single set of rules. I must admit the rules were filled with content and this worked rather well, although players were forced to buy a PDF version so they could print the rules if they wanted a referenceable copy for a game. The full rules book was too large to use as a reference in a game. Stonk, Lightning War 2, Tactical Command had no supporting material and as a result quickly faded away. Rapid Fire provided a lot of good content and coupled with its ease of play was the reason why they were probably so popular. Combat HQ is an unusual case as there is a, a lot of publications but they were often actual rules rather than army lists, equipment lists and scenarios. I suspect they are a work in progress, although I must admit a lot of additional material has come out since I first created this video and it's filling those gaps nicely. Finally, Core Commander initially had good supporting material and it was published you know, when the designer was around, but when the designer passed away, this stopped. The gap has been filled by other people parties and IO group has a lot of supporting material but the major issue with these rules are that they are too complex. I think the supporting material aspect of these rules is reasonably well covered. The next topic is not really a development or innovation but shows how the lots of D6 dice fire control system has been selected as the optimum system compared with the use of let's say a combat results table. Most rules today use the lots of D6 dice fire combat system. Strangely enough, the very first set of wargaming rules, Wargamer Digest World War II rules, used this lots of D6 dice system as well. Subsequent rules moved to board game like combat results tables, with Korth Commander having the most complex fire, fire combat results table I've ever seen. But from rapid fire onwards, the rules have moved to the lots of D6 dice system. Personally, I feel this is the correct direction for figure gaming at this scale. In the area of scenarios, the main focus is historical or pseudo-historical scenarios. Players would select a scenario they liked and went for it. Some rules had a points focus, but never to the same extent as WRG squad scale competition point system rules. In conclusion, the main points which result in a rule, set of rules being popular can be summed up in these five points. Playability, ease of learning, three to six hour game duration, supporting army lists and equipment lists and scenarios. The list is the same for all sets of rules and for platoon scale the missing element is the ability to complete a game in three hours. This is not a deal breaker as six hour games are still very possible when small enough but I feel it's an area which still needs some work. Strangely enough the original Gene McCoy rules completed by myself are the quickest play rules I've used so far. Rapid fire is good as well but has a squad scale feel to it. It is also possible players of this scale don't care about having a couple of games at the club each Sunday or even playing competition games, in which case it's not a gap at all. But I found a key element of success of a set of rules is the ability to use the rules in a club-like environment and also being able to use in a competition environment. To make this possible, the rules do need to be quicker to play. And so we come to an end of episode 3 of my video on micro armor game system design, which in this case provides an overview of platoon scale figure gaming rules for World War II and Cold War period. Alle guten Ding, kommen zu einem Ende. As of January 2024, this is about the sixth year I've been posting videos, with my oldest video on this site right now being posted in November 2019. But my actual oldest video was posted in June 2018 or perhaps January 2018 and which has since been updated and removed. My original purpose was to create an archive of videos which would assist new players to find and learn rules as well as build up their force mix and train. I did this due to the lack of such useful videos on YouTube. Since those days the number of useful videos have been 
po- that have been posted is impressive, and I feel new players will have a much better source of information to assist them in entering the hobby. Saying all of that, I am impressed by my subscription count as it's reached 900 plus, and the number of views and watch shows times show a gradual level of growth. I wish to thank all those who have supported my videos by subscribing, and I do appreciate it. My next project is to redo all my videos with superior quality audio. My old videos had very poor audio, but I've upgraded my equipment and the results have been impressive, at least in my mind. I will be revamping these videos and updating them as well, as re-watching a video simply because the audio is better is not a good enough reason to do so.